Hi, I'm Bowen Yang, and welcome to Search Party, the podcast, brought to you by iHeartRadio and HBO Max. Think of this as an audio companion to the dark comedy series that you can't help but binge watch. The theme of today's podcast is shame, which is an emotion and concept that Search Party manages to capture in these multifaceted, complex ways that are, of course, inherently relatable, even if you've never personally covered up a murder. As always, I'm joined by a representative from the show and a celebrity guest. And to discuss this week's topic, I'm joined by Elliot Goss himself, aka the hilarious John Early, one of Search Party's principal characters. And our celebrity guest is former Saturday Night Live cast member and big Search Party fan, Vanessa Bayer. Wow, wow, wow. I usually have to pay my therapist by the hour to discuss shame. So I'm excited that we get to do this right now for free with two very funny people. Join us. Hi. How are we doing? Good. I love to be a celebrity guest. Vanessa, do you wear that label well? Yes. I, um, you know, it depends what I'm doing. If I'm doing something like this, I'm a celebrity guest. But if I'm, you know, playing tennis, I'm a celebrity tennis player. Is this a good bit that I should just start out the podcast with? I think keep going. Keep going. Okay. I'll think of more examples. I'll kind of pepper them through. Good. Oh, yeah. Set the pattern now. Um, Today's theme is shame. Wow. Shame, shame, shame. Um, What does shame mean to all of you? I feel like in the traditional Brene Brown sense, it's feeling like your actions are flawed and so you don't deserve love or belonging. What, What do you guys think about that? You know, I, what's the difference between guilt and shame? Shame is like personal. Shame is like, um, it's like I was born with this. Sure. And that you are flawed and that you like have development ahead of you that keeps you from getting the things that you want or deserve, I would say. Mm-hmm. Guilt is something that you are constantly reckoning with and it's it's holding you back in a different way. But this is a really good question, actually. Because like I ask at a, just because I feel like when people talk about the differences between guilt and shame, I, I shut down. I don't know. It's also like when people talk about sympathy versus empathy. Mm. I'm always like, yeah, for sure. I, and I, I have no <laughs> idea what the difference is. I do think guilt is about actions. You feel guilty for an action that That's, you did. Yeah. And, and shame you? is about, like you're saying, like the fundamental like flaw, like I'm trash. Yeah. I, you know, wow. Okay. Good, I, like good. you could feel shame about being gay, which I, of course, do not. But you could feel guilt about committing a gay sex act, which I do feel guilt. I see. <laughs> and that's just a moment to moment granular measure of, of, of that journey for you. That's good. That's really good. <laughs> well, let's okay. Let's talk about Elliot and his relationship to shame and even guilt, let's mm. say. Do we think Elliot is ashamed about his past? And in either case, does he lie because he's ashamed? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> That's my time. Um, uh, yes, I think. And I didn't really even know. I mean, I knew, you know, seasons one through three as we were shooting that he was running from something. But I just thought it was the kind of like the deep, you know, vacuous hole within us all. That's why I wanted to talk about the episode where it, it's so funny when your family is revealed. Mm-hmm. It, I know. It's one of the fun. I mean, Search Party is so great in general, but that episode, it is so funny. And it's so funny to see like the look on your face when they like stand up. It's... Oh, El Dad, it's us. <laughs> and by the way, that's the mom from the Torkelsons. Okay. I just want to say, let's embrace the tangential nature. We will always go back. To Thank shame. You. To the theme. To the top, Absolutely. Yes. Like in real life, you, I feel like it always comes back to shame. You know, it's interesting because a lot of comedians are always like, I have no shame. I'll do whatever, you know. But I think also as a comedian myself, Mm. I also am like fully ashamed of myself all the time and at the same time have no shame. Right. You know what I mean? See, that's why I feel like it's it's a misunderstanding of the word shame. Like when people say like, I'm shameless, I feel like they most, they mean like. Guileless. I'll fucking drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Like, Like I'll do a shot. (laughs) <laughs> shame is not the same as like having some inhibition about doing a, a, right, a misguided right, thing. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's like, mo- but I feel like comedians are full of shame, like you're saying, right. like are of, of real shame of like yes. deep self-loathing and like, I feel like that's like the source of all comedy. 
Yeah, right, right, right. Shame is different than guilt in this where guilt, I feel like you can just, it's the easiest form of suffering that you can just generate and gin up at any point. <gasps> and like, what do you mean? Like you can, I can just feel, I can start to feel guilty about a thing I did when I was like seven now, if you wanted me to. That's like such I can a do good it point. on command. I yeah. completely agree. And shame is something that you just kind of like live you with. You live and, with. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry I'm being so like Brene about this. No, Bowen, I think I, you know, I listen to your other podcasts as well. I think you're so smart that it's Agree. Fun. No, it's, let's, it really not, we, let's not. Let's not do Sorry. I'm so sorry, Bowen. You're going to have to hear this. John and I are going to tell you and you're going to have to fucking hear it. You're smart. We're cutting this. You're, you're smart. You're cut from rock. <laughs> You're Keep fucking cool. Going. And you're hilarious. Wow, um, that's beautiful. That's that's really nice. Thank you. Guys. No, I I agree with you. Like I get like I I guilt is it's so easy. It's like guilt is the first thing I feel upon mm-hmm. becoming horizontal in bed. Yeah, like mm-hmm. almost 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 everything. Like every little social thing I do that I shouldn't have. Like I say something I shouldn't have. Like I can make myself feel guilty over the smallest thing. And it's Mm. like, it's very hard to release. It's something that like therapy has like helped me with because it's sort of the thing of like, you can also just like make yourself crazy with it. And it's a lot of things you feel guilt over. It's kind of like what you were saying, Bowen, you can just like call it up and it isn't necessarily warranted. No, no. It seems like Elliot deals with his shame by swinging the other way and lying, I guess. I don't know if it's a response to the engine that runs on the shame that, like, he has built up over his life. But, like, he seems to be the one who suffers the most physically out of the four friends. In terms of, like, Keith's murder, in terms of the trial, even, like, he, like, you know, he he goes to rehab, he breaks out in hives. I mean... Totally. His hair falls out. What do you think is the connection? Well, I have that in my real life with, like, shingles. Mm, it's stress. I've had like stress induced shingles. I mean, all shingles, I think, is like literally sh- stress induced. Just stress, yeah. Yeah. Wow. But like, I've had like Don't a quote couple us on t- that. Like, go to the doctor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm, Please Google. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had like a couple moments in my life of like extreme stress where like a shingles like rash rips across my skin. <laughs> I literally, it wasn't like a thing that I slowly noticed. It was like biblical, like, Damn. like ripping through my nervous system and expressing itself on my skin. It was like, and I was like, oh, that that was when I started to really actually believe the kind of shit that I'd previously rolled my eyes at, like an acting class of like, you know, you, you store that in your body. Like, yeah, you store that pain in your body, <laughs> which I was just like, no, I don't. <laughs> But you kind of do. You kind of do. I mean, yeah, if you, if, you know, wait, but what were you asking? Like, what's the connection between Elliot's sort of physical, like, breakdown and, like, mental, for that matter? Is that connected to him lying and him just sort of trying to escape the truth? Uh, Everyone else is wrestling with their, like, guilt over the, you know, murder of Keith or their deep shame. Again, don't know Mm -hmm. the difference. Please do your own work and research. But, um... (laughs) He's the only one of the four who actually is just like actively just like, no, I'm not going to waste time yeah. torturing myself over this thing that I have no control over, you know, like, sure. and that in some ways is like, I think sometimes is maybe like a healthy response, but then it always comes back to bite him in the end. Like as much as he thinks he's in control of his ability to like totally. deny or push it, push aside or forget it always like comes through his like body at the end. Yeah. He can't escape it either, basically. I feel like there's this like Newtonian law that's at play here where it's like he hits this low and he's at you think he's at his bottom. Then he swings back the other way so fully that he's just like, oh no, like let's put on this wedding, let's do all this. And then yeah. poor Elliot, he just gets swung in every direction. With that is so real too. I've never even thought about like the wedding, like people really do that. Like people at times of like true panic will like do the extreme opposite of what they should do. Like, like Mm. I I feel like I've known people who it's like their relationship is in shambles. And instead of like going to couples therapy, they get married. Right. 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 Yeah. That's dark. Um, I want to play this clip that Vanessa brought in from season three in which 
Uh, in the aftermath of being left at the altar, Elliot returns home to West Virginia, and we surprisingly learn a lot about him that we didn't know, even from prior seasons, as he learns a bit more about himself. So let's go ahead and roll that clip. Mama? Ill Dad? Well, I was not expecting this. I'm sorry for leaving, Mama. Oh, hush. We was just glad you were out there in the world, sugar. You always was the different one anyway. I think I may be too different, Mama. I can't be myself. I can't just be. I gotta invent. Please, Mama, tell me why am I this way? Did something awful happen to me that I can't remember? I need some sort of peace so I can live with myself, Mama. Well, there is this one thing I've always been scared to tell you. <gasps> Elliot Goss. Charlie Reaney. The network loves us. No. It means start thinking about what kind of show you want to make together. Because that's what's going to happen. Can you do dinner in 30 minutes? Yes, but in like six hours. Perfect. I'll see you then. I love that there's um some like there's like some rifle shotgun like stuff happening behind Elliot in yeah. that scene with like, my brothers with your brothers wow wow so funny do you think he wants to hear what his mom has to say do you think that would change him do you think the truth that is being kept from him would change him well I don't know what the truth is oh my god okay okay wow. so that's kind of an anti spoiler that, a, yeah, that that's we like, won't find out. That we don't find out. Well, we 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 can. Well, this out. I love that. So I love <laughs> think about it. Oh, <laughs> there actually is something that you should definitely okay. get an HBO Max subscription to watch four. season four. For yeah. okay, I'm gonna subscribe. <laughs> How do I? Is it pretty easy? <laughs> HBOMax.com backslash here we go slash do it now. <laughs> <laughs> backslash and forward slash is in the url in the string we're actually the first streaming platform to incorporate both a slash and a backslash <laughs> um i would imagine that if he found out i yeah I, I think he is very much swinging to avoid because he knows that if he like he thinks that if he truly found out it would like change him but i think the sad thing about Elliot and about lots of people, myself included, is like, if you actually go towards the darkness uh-huh. and face it, you usually do survive. No one, you can't die. Yeah. You can't oh, literally nice. die from the truth, you know? I, this is, this is a potentially very vulnerable question and we, we don't have to all answer this. I was, I would say 13 when I knew I was gay and, I was, <laughs> but I didn't tell anyone. Until right, right, 14, right. 14, 15, yeah. Anyway, oh next my question. god! Um, I don't know if it's this performer's instinct, this dumb synapse that fires in your brain when you're a certain age. But I just remember at like twelve, just wanting attention so badly at school that one day I came in, just like worked myself up into a heaving sob and was like, just so someone could ask me at the lockers, Bowen, what's wrong? <laughs> and then, so I could then say no, wait for it, and so, this is very Elliot. So like, so and and fully sociopathic, by the way. So so that yeah. I could then say, my mom has cancer, and truly, no, like, v- like a full lie, a full lie. Oh, what is wrong with me? My God. And look, and look, I don't mean to generalize this to like you guys are all performers. I just feel like there is this like impulse to like embellish and invent and that is just like the most extreme version of that i think i just and i just revealed this crazy crazy thing about like i just feel like that is so deeply embarrassing and shameful speaking of shame i just feel like what like why why do people do that why do we do that it's there's nothing i mean this is like I remember people would get on the bus when I was little and they'd have like a broken leg and they'd like come on with their crutches and stuff. And I'd be like, so (laughs) jealous. Just like, look at them. Then people would like sign their cast and they'd be like, what the fuck? Why can't I have, like, you know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, they're going to keep this cast and then they can just like have it in their room. This is awesome. Like, I'm very open about, you know, the fact that I'm a leukemia survivor I just want to pause and like have I you guys. I think we're running out of time. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're nearing the end of the episode. But, but this has I, been incredible, Bowen. Thank you, Nessa. Thank, thank you. you. No, I never talk about it, but I will today. Um, but like, no, we have talked about this. Yeah. I remember you like being like 
when you watched season one, you were like, you talked to me about like being scared about people think you were think you were lying. I got so much attention from it, and it was mm-hmm. like so like if I had had a different personality type, I think I would have been really jarring and really scary, but given the personality type that I had where I loved attention and I was like, you know, like I am a performer now. And like, I I was like, great. You know, we used to, in my family, we would call it dropping the album when we would get things. No. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I t- t- kind of do stand up about this now, but like we, wow. when I would get things, when we would get things, my dad got out of a speeding ticket once because he was like, my daughter is just, I'm going to the hospital to me. But That's like, so amazing. I was like fully, <laughs> but like we would like use it. It's like such great attention. And then, yeah. and to like even boil it down to like, sometimes when you like have a cold and people are like, how oh, are you yeah. feeling? Can I bring uh-huh. you soup? You're like, yeah, I'm, it's not great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think this all ties into this all scopes out nicely into the whole show, which is that like taking on this air of affliction gets you certain things in this very transactional way where it's like, oh, I can, you know, get attention for putting this certain thing on display. And like sometimes it's valid, sometimes it's not, sometimes it's destructive, sometimes it's constructive. And um the difference between you and I, Vanessa, is that I just fully lied. Just to get attention on on one day at school, for one day at school. And then you, I mean, however rightly, I mean, I feel like that's perfectly fine for you and your family to be like, to get out of, you know, to like totally use that. I do too, but I still feel like it's funny that how much joy I got out of like just being like, um, I don't know, like, can I sit here? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I just feel like also it's like a primal instinct. Everyone wants attention. Mm-hmm. Cause mm-hmm. attention, I guess, like looks something like nurture or like protection or just like mirroring. It's like proof that you exist if yeah. people are looking at you. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. like we all want it, but we're all, we're very rarely tested by those moments where you kind of like quote unquote deserve attention. Like, you, right. Like only some of us are lucky enough to have <laughs> leukemia. <laughs> you know? Oh my God. <laughs> And, like, you don't know how you're going to react. Like, I think a lot of people would think, like, oh, if I had, like, something crazy happened to me, I wouldn't be some, like, monster about it. I wouldn't, like, right. use it for attention. But it's, uh-huh. like, you don't know until you're, you're like, literally suffering from leukemia and everyone's going, oh, are you okay? Like, sure. of course you're going to like it. It's interesting that you bring up mirroring, John, earlier, because I feel like that's kind of, like, the source that explains, like, all of this behavior where it's, like, I want to express this, like state of shame or the state of like let's say affliction to in order to like validate like how i'm feeling like i want i need someone to tell me oh you're not doing great or right are you okay you know like that kind of right you you kind of need it sort of sounded back to you in a way totally so or or played back yeah Yeah. i was was gonna i was gonna talk about my own story of taking advantage (laughs) of um please no we have to or enjoying attention but so not to again want to Vanessa here, but when I was because this in no way does, but when I was in third grade, my house burned down. What? And re- uh, really though? Yeah, really. Oh shoot. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I think you did. Again, yeah. I was eight years old, so you know I'm fine. But like, it burned down literally on Christmas night. Oh my god! <gasps> what happened? Thank you guys. Um, it was literally an electrical fire. It wasn't even a Christmas wow. tree fire. It was like this- a. Wow. random like and it was like a boom box plugged in by the <gasps> boom box plugged in and not and turned off okay i'm there i'm 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 there it's the 90s yes yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> 1996 but the point is it was so traumatic for my parents and my sister who my sister who was six years older than me still is six mm-hmm. years older mm-hmm. um we like basically lost everything and and it was like and my sister was like more of a sentient like teenager you know whereas i was truly a child she was like 14 14 15 okay okay thank you wow no i'm (laughs) doing the math you know Um, i love details john i know i know (laughs) um we should talk about that in a second but um but then when i like went it was basically for me because i was having to go through like the true trauma of like like my Mm -hmm. belongings didn't really mean anything to me at that age and then also i wasn't doing the like hellish work of like my which my parents were doing like talking to the insurance company every day i've been like yeah going through every single object that they could remember that was in the house it was like a nightmare you know for me i just was like purely enjoying the like city-wide attention 
Uh like news cameras, honey. And then also like coming back to school and like literally my teacher being like, John, do you want to tell everyone what happened? And me having to like stand up and be like, I guess so. I, Uh (laughs) and then, and then, and then like literally like families like donating stuff, like bringing stuff to school, like clothes and stuff for me and like, and toys and stuff. And I was like, thank you so much. Wow. I mean, this is... Such... But I loved it is all I'm saying. I loved it. Of course. Of course you did. And no one would fault you for loving it because I feel like this is... Well, first of all, I should say it's it, it's beautiful sort of mythologizing for you, John Early specifically, because I feel like your house burning down on Christmas Day feels it's, like part of... It makes of, so much sense. Part of the origin story, right? <laughs> um, but then but then I feel like this is... That, that, that kind of just sounds like Dory season three. And even season mm. one, Dory, where she's like, I'm looking for my best friend Chantal aren't I such a good person? And then uh, all the way to season three where it's like, I didn't kill Keith and I'm getting all this attention. Like, you know, like it, it seems to track and sort of extrapolate nicely. Well, and that's what's so interesting. I feel like is like, you don't know, like it's easy to judge Dory, but like none of us know how we would react if suddenly no. we were on like a Diane Sawyer type show or like a superstar, mm-hmm. like, you know, out of nowhere or like, yeah. Or if suddenly people were going, thank you so much for helping find Chantal. It's like, you don't, right. like most of us hopefully have like the chip that like keeps you in check. That it's like, right. okay, I, I don't need, I, I should stop enjoying this. Like, and she doesn't. So she just, she just fully takes it and takes it and takes it. After this quick break, we'll continue our exploration of the theme of shame in the context of Search Party with John Early and Vanessa Bayer. Keep listening. A couple more questions before we before we end things. Out of the four friends, so we, we're talking about Elliot, Dory, Drew, and Portia. Which one of those people do you think actually feels guilty or shameful or like about like what's going on? I feel like it's maybe Drew, Drew for sure, and maybe Portia yeah. because she confessed. She confesses to Elijah. Yes, but maybe that's it. Yeah, I think I think Portia and. Drew, yes. I mean, again, we're working off our like very shaky definitions of shame and guilt, but I think Portia and Drew feel guilty for their involvement, mm-hmm. their actions, mm-hmm. and want to like atone. Elliot and Dory feel deep, deep personal shame that's been with them pre Keith murder. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. That they're like always running from. Sure. Also, I think for Dory, it feels like her she changes a lot. Like, it feels like at first she maybe does feel guilty about it. And then she sort of Mm -hmm. takes, then I think she gets so into all the attention and stuff that she, it starts to change her relationship with what happened. Like it makes her feel like the guilt suddenly turns into sort of like excitement. Yeah. Yeah. The guilt gets transmuted into like a victimhood, which then justifies her being like, I'm going to, lean into this media star sort of identity. Yeah. I also feel like none of these shame journeys are linear because it it feels like Portia is struggling with it. She confesses and then she sort of has this really spiritual moment and then she kind of swings back again. Like Elliot, she swings back and buys the alibi suitcase. Mm -hmm. It feels like none of these people are sort of, they're kind of just spiraling in and out of shame and then action to like correct things and then back to shame. And so... That's kind of one of the great things about the show, I think. Totally. There's no, like, clear, like, there's no easy, like, transcendence of one's shame. And then Mm -hmm. you arrive at the other version of that character. You know, whatever. There's no, like, true, like, cheeseball hero's journey. It's like, because there's no such thing in real life. You're, like, actually this, like, fragmented. You contradict yourself constantly. You're, you know. Mm -hmm. Wow. Joseph Campbell is rolling in his grave. (laughs) How dare you? There's no such thing as a hero's journey. Um, No, I agree. I agree. And especially with this show. But to make it personal, I mean, how do we, the three of us individually, pull ourselves out of a shame spiral? Because I feel like the only way I do it is through like sensory overload and I like eat and I listen to music or whatever. What about you? I'm going to say that I, and this is, you know, I'm bragging again, but I do transcendental meditation twice a day. Mm. 
And so I think that helps me with that stuff. Sometimes I think through it while I'm meditating. Sometimes I don't, but it sort of helps. Yeah. How much was your mantra? Oh, yeah. Did, did you have to pay for it? <laughs> how, how do, you do how, not have to answer. I would never. Dare, but, no, I, I mean. <laughs> don't I, answer. Don't answer. I was being silly. We can no, cut this well, out. <laughs> but the point is, no, I won't tell you, but, um, but that is helpful. And I just think also any other kind of like visualization I can do in my mind of just like yeah. letting things go. You know, this is funny. And I say we keep this because I think this is interesting because I what my sort of weekly practice at work is at SNL is that I meditate every Tuesday and every Saturday. So Tuesday before ending it and then Saturday before dress. Do you have a way like do you know what you're doing? Like, have you listened to an app or something? It's just like, it's just app stuff, but like it dips into transcendental. It's not nearly as intense as what I imagine Vanessa has like disciplined herself into. But can I give you another time to do it that I used to do it? <gasps> Wait, yeah. I would always, right after the table read on Wednesday, oh, God. the first <laughs> thing I would do, sorry, John. Oh, I just, sorry, John. We agreed, we agreed that there'd be no bonding over us. No tonight. shop talk. I know, I know. I'm sorry. But, but right after the table read on Wednesday, mm-hmm. because nothing really happens during that time. And I would just go into like my office, close the door. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, people would like come in and they, whatever. But it's actually kind of a mini version of what we were talking about earlier. Whereas like, if like someone, like a writer or cast member would come in to like ask you something and then they would see the lights were off and you were meditating, they feel so bad. And you're like, (laughs) okay. But anyways, (laughs) so I would do that because it's it's a nice time to calm yourself after like that long table read. And then- Mm -hmm to like center yourself before all the stuff that gets picked for the week comes out later that night and you're either really excited or just the most upset you've ever been in your yeah. life. <laughs> That's sort of one of the most tenuous sort of emotional times you can you can really have there. So that yeah. that, that makes sense. But I was I was doing it enough that people noticed. Uh-huh. And then I think it, I think 80 was like, "Oh, you know who did that? You know who meditated? Like Vanessa." And I was like, Wow. And I and I just felt this this kinship with you even though you weren't there. I love that. I don't know. I've always like I've heard that in TM you had like I've heard that like a mantra is like I always thought like when I first heard the word mantra, I obviously thought like it's literally like yeah. you go girl or something. It's like right. it's like so words. Did I. It's like a, it, and yeah. then I've but then I've heard it's actually like kind of sounds. It's like mm-hmm. kind of random syllables. I know you can't say Vanessa, but it like, is. It is. It's just something. I think it's. It's more of a tool to get you to sort of center yourself. I think than it doesn't mean anything. Right. Right. Yeah. And because of that, when I've been like absolutely spiraling, having a major work to finish, what I've done moment at night, I'll like sometimes I'll like resort to like untrained TM, where I just like make up a. I make up a mantra. I'll be like, I'll like put three syllables together, like moo ma me. <laughs> I, I think that's great. Um, oh, I do have one specific Elliot question that I would like to ask before we I want to answer it. <laughs> okay, and Vanessa, you should I think you it. should try. Vanessa Vanessa, I want to do the first pass. Um, so do we think that Elliot's shame around his past is this barrier to him becoming this like authentic person or his authentic self? Okay, I my answer and I'm curious to see what John thinks as probably everyone else is and no one cares what I think but what I would say is that I think he's so he has like a special skill for lying in a way that he basically can convince himself Mm -hmm. I don't see it as a barrier I see it more I think his true self is like whoever he decides to be sort of Whereas like for like 99% of people, I would think it was a barrier. But for Elliot, oh, he's a special keys. <laughs> <laughs> we have John nodding ag- vigorously in agreement. Yes, yes. I completely agree. I was going to say, what is the authentic self? You know what I mean? Like what I think the yeah. authentic self, the concept of the authentic self is like um, a kind of romantic ideal that we use in society I, to like have something to aspire to in our like right. miserable lives i think that people most people who would claim that they are their authentic selves or are able to tap into their authentic selves are not aware of the level of artifice you know 
like when you feel like you're being the most genuine, you're probably doing something kind of phony. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I think Elliot is, I think his authentic self is something that is like, it's like this crazy patchwork quilt of like all these lies and kind of like totally. posturing. And I think within that, he's able to be relaxed. Yeah. Half the time he's very manic and like performing. And then other, like half the time he is just kind of like, eh. he's like lazy and relaxed. Sure. And so I think it maybe that is like his quote unquote authentic self. Is this just kind of like neutral, kind of like Meh. Yeah. Because, you know, the the Patrick of Lies becomes like the upholstery to his comfort or whatever. You know, it's yeah. like maybe his authentic self is artifice, which I know is stupidly like oxymoronic or whatever, or but like no, I, I, mean, I feel like that I believe in it. I yeah, I think I think that's I think we got it. And we have we got there we're together. all we're all basically just like little pieces of behavior that we're mimicking, you know, yes. from like our parents or our siblings or our friends, you know, we're all like, and I think that's what's scary about Elliot to people. I think that's actually his like power is like, he is, he is like showing, he's exposing to people that like, mm-hmm. we're all just kind of making up our selves, you know, we're all like, kind of like pasting together our identity through like a series of like performances and lies and like mimicry Mm. and because he's doing it so brazenly it's like he's i mean hello it's like drag (laughs) yeah yeah well it's 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 pastiche we're all just like works of pastiche just walking around yeah wow beautiful um oh uh, i would love to hear why it's elliot's instinct to lie when he finds out keith was murdered because i feel like he's kind of the first person to pitch it to the group right yeah, it's like something that I literally often forget mm. as like the actor playing Elliot. Yeah, yeah. And then like when I remember, but, but I think that's kind of interesting that like it happens so fast. His gut instinct is always, if you have it, the option between like taking the blame for something or not lying mm-hmm. your way out of it, like choose the lie. Why would you want to suffer needlessly? Of that's course. Elliot talking, obviously, but like, because that's his knee-jerk response to literally everything, and he's in this, like, they're all in this heightened, like, panic survival mode, he falls back on his, like, old instincts of just, like, everyone calm down, we're gonna be fine, let's lie around. And I don't think he is aware in that moment. But maybe Mm. he is. When I I was, we watched that, we were, my, Gordon and I started watching it all again, like, from the Mm -hmm. very beginning. Yeah. And, like, which was not my idea. <laughs> okay. okay. He no, like it's... I was at literally at gunpoint huh. at one point. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but oh yeah, we have guns. Um. But uh no, but he but like we were we were watching again. I, we watched that episode and I was like, oh my god, he like fully or at least I played it like he's like yeah. fully in control and well the like, calmness gives him authority in that situation. I think like everyone's just like so distressed and everyone's and like right. it's the only one who's just like wait guys, it's fine. Right. So maybe he's putting it on. That all tracks, and I feel like the show is just so good at drilling down deeper into why he does this, which, Mm -hmm. yeah, is perfect. Um, Vanessa, what is your favorite thing about Elliot as a character? And then about John as an actor? Shut up! Uh, (laughs) Elliot as a character, it's hard to separate from how much I love John as a performer. (laughs) Yes, John is obviously one of the most talented performers of our time. I think I it's think fair so. to say. I think that's true. Um, and I love just My audio like, went out. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't hear I anything love, you guys said. Um, I just love his confidence to, in mm. doing the wrong thing and like making bad choices mm-hmm. all the time. Like his, he's so secure in, in making bad decisions. Also, like, I love when he yells and like screams and freaks out. I love when he goes again into that Southern accent, when he goes back home, I just Uh love like how, like every swing he takes is very big. (laughs) Yeah. But I don't mean as an actor, I mean, in like decision wise. I heard it. That's how I heard it. And it's too late. John, do less, do less, do less. It's gotten in. Wow. It just looks like when John is up there, he's working really hard, and I love seeing. <laughs> just I'm just kidding. You I, see I, him I sweat. Truly, really, you can see like John playing a character. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, I just love. I love how confident <laughs> Elliot is in making bad decisions, and I love how John is so talented and literally one of the funniest people 
Oh, you're, s- yeah. you're sick. You're s- ill. No, you guys don't Sorry. even don't even get me started on the the phenomenon of John leaving New York so that the rest of us gay actor comedians could eat his crumbs. <laughs> And I wouldn't be where I'm at. My life. Stop it. Stop it. Um, well, on that note, John Early, Vanessa Bayer, thank you so much for joining me. This was a this lovely was episode. So thank fun. you. This was so fun. And uh thank you so much for being my guest today. Is there a theme song? Do you want us to sing it? Yeah. John, let's do it. Okay. Are we th- are we singing the search party theme song? No, bing, our, bing, the one bing, that we did. D- oh, oh, the one that we sing that one. Oh, Which but, you, but you, 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 you should do yours, though. I was yeah. going to do the one that we wrote. That we wrote in advance. <laughs> if you said Jinx, Jinx. <laughs> For the party. The, the real party's what? right here. Let's get oh, that's good. to the party now. <laughs> <laughs> and search for it. Oh. Oh. Good chord progression. Really good. Yeah. John, did really you think good. that that's kind of represents what we wrote? Yeah, <laughs> I, yes. We all ultimately don't have the paper in front the, of us. The band here, and the, which like I don't have the sheet music. Yeah, yeah. And so and now just as a also a good button, I feel shame for that bit that I forced. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas I feel guilt for doing it. <laughs> Interesting. Very good. <laughs> Well, I'm happy to report that even though we just spent this entire podcast discussing shame, I don't feel like I need to take a shower to wash away the feeling right now. Oof. Well, thanks so much to John Early and Vanessa Bear for being my guests today. Until next time, I'm Bowen Yang. Join me on Wednesday for a new episode in which we'll deep dive into the many themes of Search Party with two more special guests. Search Party, the podcast, is a production of HBO Max and iHeartRadio. It's executive produced by Ethan Fixell, produced and written by Jonah Bayer, written and researched by Marissa Brown, and engineered, edited, and mixed by Matt Stillo. If you haven't already subscribed, rated, or reviewed Search Party, the podcast, please do so on the iHeartRadio app, HBO Max, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you might get your podcasts. And don't forget to watch season four of Search Party, premiering January 14th only on HBO Max. HBO Max.